Amanda Baker. I'm one of the residents at Brown. And um, the reception at the American Society of Neuroradiology was very good, and um, everyone was very interested. Um, so without further ado, I have nothing to report. Um, I'm just going to touch on um, the imaging of tethered cord syndrome classically as we know it, as well as occult tethered cord, and um, our experience, which was a subset of um, patients from the total patient population that Dr. Klinga is studying. So classically, um, when we look for a tethered cord syndrome, we're looking for specific things, um, low-lying conus. Um, we started this project and we started to question what is low. In neuroradiology, we consider anything lower than L2 at any age greater than 12 years old is generally accepted as abnormal, and this has been published um, initially in 1970 and has been reiterated throughout the literature since then. Um, a thickened or fatty phylum is also uh, abnormal, and at the meeting, um, they did discuss a thickened phylum, and there was agreement that anything greater than two millimeters is thick. Um, mass lesions or other um, bony abnormalities are also things that we look for. However, in occult tethered cord syndrome, it's essentially a normal MRI, which is shown here. We don't see any of the previously mentioned findings. Um, and we defined a normal MRI in our study as the absence of phylum fat or thickening, as well as the conus position above the L23 intervertebral disc space, although we'll talk about that further. Um, and we looked at these patients that met the clinical triad as established by Dr. Klinga and her team. Um, I also just wanted to touch on studies that have been done with other imaging modalities using MRI, such as prone pa patient positioning. There have been multiple studies done. Ultimately, we have not adopted this at our institution. The literature is mixed. Um, you know, it's not specific enough. Um, the study in 1996 did not show statistical significance between the control population um, and the tethered cord patient population. Although some positive findings are seen, essentially it's just not good enough at this point. It's uncomfortable for the patient. There are other downsides of prone imaging. Um, and so although there are a lot of studies that show some positive findings, um, it's not something that we do at Brown. So in our experience, in the subset of patients, we had a twofold hypothesis. First, that tethered cord may be present in the absence of um, recognized MR imaging abnormalities, and also that pediatric and adult patients, so we, we uh, combined our patient population with respect to age, who have the clinical symptoms consistent with tethered cord syndrome, but normal imaging findings may benefit from surgery. So we conducted a retrospective study at our institution. We had two board-certified neuroradiologists review 28 pediatric and adult uh, L-spine MRIs, mean age 31, who were operated on between 2015 and 2016 by Dr. Klinga. Um, these patients received pre- and post-operative clinical evaluations by four different practitioners within the Department of Neurosurgery. Uh, they were compared to the aged match controls, one patient of which we had to exclude for in, inadequate imaging, and these aged match controls received imaging for back pain. We reviewed the presence of a fatty or thickened phylum, the level and appearance of the conus and distal spinal cord, um, in other words, whether or not it had normal or abnormal morphology, the presence of spinal dysprathism or other bony abnormalities, and any other related abnormalities. So we also reviewed the clinical variables, as Dr. Klinga discussed, um, with respect to the clinical triad. So our results. The first neuroradiologist did not find any positive findings in either the tethered or non-tethered cord population, and the second found a positive finding in the tethered cord patient population as well as in the control patient population. So overall, there were no consistent findings of spinal cord tethering in the tethered cord patients. Um, and with a thank you to Andrew Powers, a medical student who uh, worked on the um, analysis for this subset of 28 patients specifically, as Dr. Klinga showed the larger uh, clinical data, this data is just for the patients that we looked at the MRI for. There was significant improvement following surgery in these patients. Um, and also to reiterate, the positive urodynamic 
study as an indicator for surgery seemed to be very significant, uh, as well as urinary incontinence, retention, lower extremity pain, decreased sensation, weakness, and hyperreflexia. We also looked at conus level. We were interested, is there something we're missing with the conus level and what is normal? Um, we found no difference statistically between our tethered cord population and, and control patients. Um, so that was, that was interesting. In summary, we had pediatric and adult patients with normal imaging findings for tethered cord and clinically relevant tethered cord syndrome. In these patients, despite normal imaging, they had significant improvement in their objective